Hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about integrity. And uh, the ways that I use and think about integrity are a little bit different than I think, than for sure, is in the dictionary. Uh, so I'd like to start this off by first um, opening it up for anybody who'd like to share what their view of integrity is. I'm holding true to your principles. Okay. Integration of what you say and what you do. Mm -hmm. What you believe in. Anybody else? No? Internal consistency. Mm. Not contradicting. Internal consistency. Not lying to yourself. Honesty with self. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, so now uh, I will read a little bit here about um, something I wrote about integrity, uh, which is that we all wear some kind of mask, and uh, that that I think typically depends on context, right? So if you're talking with a boss or a coworker um, or an employee, uh, you might wear a little bit of a different mask. You might behave slightly differently. You might use certain words or different words um, and behave in a different manner, reveal different parts of yourself, et cetera, versus if you're talking with a close friend, right? So to me, we if you're looking at integrity as a spectrum of you know one to a thousand. Um, I would I would bet that nobody is at a thousand on their integrity, um, especially if you include the ways that we are subconsciously wearing masks, all the little tells that our bodies give out and our, uh, when we are with different people that we may not even be uh, aware of. So um, this is. That's sort of the beginning of how I see integrity as being a little bit different than the dictionary. Um, although everything that you guys said is included in my definition of integrity. Um, especially, I guess, the, the one I'm thinking of most is consistency. To me, that's, that's really what integrity means to me more than anything else is in consistency. And one of the things I want to mention here, or more like a few things, um, is... The, and I'll, I'll sum it up right now. Is like integrity with self, which J, JP uh, mentioned. Um, integrity with our language. Integrity with creation and work. Integrity with politics and philosophy. And integrity with parenting and education. And integrity with love relationships. Okay, so these are the different ways that I can think of that we all may change our mask a little bit, but then we all can have a similar mask. And by similar mask, I mean the ways that we act and we speak, and maybe in my case, I like to think of them being based on uh, principles or values. So for me, important values are um, choice and authenticity. So I like to think about you know any of those those sort of subtopics I just mentioned, like with um, language. Let's say I want to be uh, authentic in my language while also promoting choice versus uh, versus promoting coercion. So there are many ways I think that we can shift our language to promote choice and even to promote interdependence versus promoting dependence. Um, and I won't go into details about that because I could talk for hours and hours on language and how we can use it to promote choice. Uh, so another sort of subtopic here is um, creation and work. Uh, so there, um, I like to look at that in terms of integrity, in terms of choice, authenticity, um, flexibility. Uh, oh, and another important word that I, I forgot to, that I'm remembering to bring up is foundation. Like for all these subtopics, I think foundation is a very important thing. Like if you're creating a relationship, if you're creating um, an object of some kind, a project, <coughs> foundation to me is super important and it ties in perfectly with integrity. Because let's say you're, for example, building a deck. 
and you want to think about, I think it's, it's super important to really consider that foundation and really think about the ways that that foundation uh, will be something that other things will be built upon and that we want to build that foundation so not only does it have integrity so things can rest on it and be safe, but also so that things can rest on it and be flexible so that that foundation is also flexible so that in the future, if you decide, let's say you're building a deck and you're like, hey, this deck, I'm going to build it modular. I'm going to build it with little pieces that hook together so that it's real easy to change the configuration if I ever need to. And then also so it's stable and safe so that lots of weight can sit on that deck. So I think there's an example of sort of a physical manifestation of foundation, integrity, and building. And then, um, so going into one that I think a lot of people here might enjoy is politics and philosophy. And that's where, um, you know, in my politics, I'm a voluntarist. And to me, it fits again. And so the integrity here is not just in each of these individual items that I'm bringing up, like language, creation, politics, lovers, parenting, whatever. But that each of these tie together and that we have the same sort of mask or way of being with each of these things. So it's in, in politics and philosophy, it is the same that I want a foundation that is strong and makes sense and is flexible and in, embraces choice. So I think there, you know, embracing choice is a big part of voluntarism for me because I want everybody to be able to make their own choices. Parenting and education, okay? So that's where I believe that we have a need for choice, again, and that's allowing children to have a choice. Because if we do not give them a choice, if we tell them what to do, can they be virtuous, for example? Can anybody be virtuous if they're being forced into a certain behavior? If they're being forced into good behavior, then you did not make that choice, so can that be called virtue? But if you're allowed to make choices and make mistakes, then you can learn and you can grow. But if you're not allowed these choices, then you're going to grow up and you're going, are you going to value choice? If your whole, if your experience was that you were not given choices, why would you wish to give them to others? It would require quite a bit of energy, I think. Um, so in, I'll, I'll move ahead to uh, love relationships. So for me, again, integrity is about choice, foundation, um, and nothing else. <laughs> love? <laughs> yeah, so love relationships. There, um, I would want both parties to be constantly making the choice to be in that relationship, as well as any uh, activities that fell within that relationship. So there, I, you know, again, um, using force in a relationship, you're... You're not uh, embracing choice. And uh, I'm going to pause right now, and I'm really kind of at the end there, and I can zoom in on any part of this. And uh, I intended to pause after each one of these items and ask for questions, but I'm opening it up right now. Yeah, yeah so um, a lot of like abstract, awesome ideas there. <coughs> Do you have any sort of examples in mind of someone incorrectly? Like maybe wearing the wrong mask in a situation, what maybe the right situation, what you could do. Any examples, any concrete examples? Okay, so if you're at work and you're uh, talking to somebody and about the wild party that you just went to and your boss hears about it or hears you talking about it and how that might impact your employment yeah so there's an example of sort of practical ways that people choose to wear a mask yeah I, I mean like I definitely around my managers I, I sort of mince my words like differently than I, than I have been around other people so I guess with that example it seems like wearing a mask is a positive thing but along the way you had in the presentation was about giving people more information and allowing for greater amounts of choice. Um, so could you talk about areas where you think masks are good versus bad? Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, 
So actually, I don't see that as all positive. And you know, that, so that situation, the work situation, I see that as a, a compromise that people choose. And optimally, we would always, you know, every situation, including the work one, optimally, we would be completely ourselves. We'd be comfortable sharing everything about our lives and not incur some sort of judgment uh, or you know, other negative thing. Um, so could, could I look at it like um, I'm offering to do this work for my employer and the understanding is that uh, I'm going to behave a certain way um, that puts his interests above my own. So maybe, as you said, like there's an example where um, it, is, is that, it is okay uh, we don't have to feel sort of morally guilty for putting on a mask. I'm not saying it, it is or is not good. I'm saying that's an example maybe we could say um, what I'm voluntarily choosing to do with this employer takes precedent over something else. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% clear if you were asking a question or not. I mean, I agree with what you said. And, uh, um, I guess I'm just sharing like maybe that's an example where uh, we'd say that it would be okay to not be exactly your normal, comfortable at home self and not be sharing certain information. Um, and if anyone disagrees, I think that's, it, that would be interesting. Yeah, I guess to me, it's like um, the, it, 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 with what you were saying, it's, um, it's, it's definitely a trade, but it's if you could have, still have, make the money um, and enjoy the work life, at least to me, I think it would be more beneficial to be able to not have to wear that kind of a mask. Is that, is that the, the point that you're saying? Well, I guess I, I look at it like um, there's a stack of pros and cons for every behavior, for every choice like this. And if you're staying at that job, I mean, to me, it's an individual thing. And if you're staying at that job, then obviously you have stacked the pros and cons to be, hey, it's worth it to you. Um, you may bitch about it. You may um, you know, have all kinds of resentment, but... Again, you know, whatever your conscious decision is, or whatever that decision is based on, is um, what you're choosing. So you must believe that it's worth it. Yeah. What about not telling um, a friend or someone that's very close to you the truth? Because you know that if you did, then you would basically cut all ties with that person, maybe the family member, whatnot. So is it best to? just keep the relationship or is it best to tell them the truth knowing that it will destroy that relationship or even relationships yeah that to me is one of the greatest challenges that maybe yeah definitely one of if not the top greatest challenge that i have personally constantly is how authentic can i be while still being compassionate. And compassion does not necessarily mean avoiding hard truths either, or you know, avoiding pain when you, you make that calculation in your head. How much is this gonna help them? How much is it gonna hurt them? Um, I mean, my, my belief, I lean toward authenticity as far as there, you know, when I talk about relationships, um, I wrote a lot more than I actually spoke up here. Um, but one of the things that I, I think about is authenticity and how, you know, if you, let's say you have a, a lover and you are, you know, they ask you something like, hey, were you checking out that other person? Or, you know, I mean, this is a really sort of simple, shallow um, example, but I think it'll work. Um, hey, were you checking out that waitress's ass as he was walking away? It looks like he were. And then, so then one choice is, uh, no, you know, a lie, basically. No, I wasn't. Um, I have eyes only for you, or, or just, no, I wasn't. And to me, this impacts the relationship, because I think we're constantly walking around calibrating. <coughs> and by calibrating, I mean we're like, we're at least subconsciously a lot, okay? So when a person says something to us, we are looking at their face, we're looking at their body language, we're remembering everything they've ever said to us on some level, and we're correlating that, we're putting that together, and then we're looking at their expression in their face and their eyes and all that, along with those words. And 
And when, so when they lie to us, they are decreasing the knowing that they have, that we have of them, of each other. And to me, in any kind of relationship, whether it's with a client, a lover, a friend, a child, whatever, um, the more we know each other, the more we're accurate with our um, interpretation of their body language, uh, then the more that we can serve each other, the more that we can be happy together. Uh, but when you tell a lie, you're, you're um, sabotaging that process, and you're confusing their brain, and the, it's, it's ultimately reducing the power of the relationship. Uh, does that answer your question? <laughs> Thanks for that question. Cause, uh, yeah. I was just going to say, you could argue that you, you can't have a relationship with somebody who's lying to you because then you have, you're having a relationship with what you think they are, mm. but they're lying to you, so <laughs> you, you don't know what they actually are. Oh, yeah, speaking of masks, yeah, I mean, that's thickening the mask. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so a bit of a devil's advocate kind of question. So if integrity can be flexible, is there ever a time to not... I don't know. I mean, I, I think that's up to the individual, and I don't. Uh, the way you phrased that, it kind of sounded black and white to me. Like have integrity or not have integrity, and I I get that perspective, but I tend to subscribe to there being like a, earlier I said one to a thousand, like that there's this range of integrity that we all have some integrity, because if you didn't, all your subatomic particles would be just like, <laughs> and you'd fall apart, and you'd be this gelatinous, gross thing right there, probably. Okay, what Who about, knows? What about life or death situations? Like, I'm sorry, I don't want to die, so I probably would not, I probably would not have the integrity at that point. You know what I mean? If someone was going to kill me, then I, I, don't, I don't know if I would be in my right mind. I probably wouldn't think appropriately at that point. Also, lies are black and white, right? You either lie or you don't lie. Yeah. Uh, Hmm. Philosophically, hmm. I think we can come close to the truth. I think there's distances from the truth. I was looking at one of her asterisks. Unless you're looking at you know, an <laughs> equation. Are we equating integrity with honesty? Like hmm. honesty about who you are in all situations? Is that? Well, you can, but I, I, I see them as because I like to, you know, when any, any given word is you know, um, spelled differently, I like to just really distinguish between those words, but that, I'm being a little snarky there. Um, I, I relate honesty to integrity, and I think m not as much as many people, most people do. I think they're, I mean, for me, they're definitely related. Um, I think some people conflate them, so it's like oh, the same thing, um, or that they're tightly linked where one must be with the other. To me, you could be in integrity and always be a liar. That's integrity or 90% of the time you're you, you can't be counted on to show up somewhere well there's there's a form of integrity <laughs> that, that's a consistency like you said earlier so it's a consistency with whatever so you could be a consistent liar a consistent cheat whatever yeah. my biggest question or thought about this is the function of language which you brought up you know a discussion about language, but um, sometimes it's not very practical to go into depth by yourself when there is a task ahead, you know, at hand. Um, a few weeks ago, for example, I experienced a meeting in which we were trying to actually organize to solve a problem, but the facilitator of that meeting decided to spend a lot of time getting to know everybody, and it's, that's kind of generalization, but it, I felt like over the three hours that we were there, we didn't accomplish the task that we set out to do because we were trying to get to know each other so into so much depth at that moment, and we were 40 of us. So is it practical to go into using that sort of language versus get, using language that is very direct and to the point, and then at a later time, mm -hmm. getting to know each other? Excuse me, what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it sounds like for you, when you hear about <coughs> what aspect of integrity in language, and even, I'm not sure how much I said earlier about that, like, um, you know, clarity, authenticity, efficiency, and empathy, to me are, uh, and again, that's clarity, authenticity, 
efficiency, and empathy. So to me, these are values that I, I value that make for integrity in language. And note that I said efficiency. So I don't really believe that, like, I see how some people might say, okay, if you want to be empathetic in your, in your speaking, then you're going to not be so efficient. And I don't think that's a necessary trade-off. That's just something I've been working on for a while, and I've gotten to the point now where sometimes I'll just say, you know, somebody will say a bunch of stuff, I'll say, oh, you wanted respect. Or, oh, you're really excited because you, you got some clarity there, or whatever. Um, so I'm a real big fan of efficiency, and I can understand how it'd be really frustrating when you're in this meeting, and people are just bullshitting the whole time from your perspective, it seemed like that, right? They're just getting to know each other, and all this, and like, hey, we're here to complete a task, yeah. get something done. <laughs> I feel like my time is being wasted. Right? Yeah, so I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Could a person have very low integrity, but also be moral and not evil? Yeah, I can see those being different things that don't always coincide, sure. Can you? <clears throat> I was just thinking, our integrity, is this an aesthetic, right? Or, or is this um, more a moral question? Are we talking about, like, when I see people talking about pros and cons and subjective benefit and stuff, like, well, this is a trade-off here, trade-off here, it seems that we're talking about aesthetics, preferences, values, utility, and so on, mm -hmm. as opposed to morality, which is, um, well, that's it's clear when you're, you've broken the moral bounds. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, I don't know the answer to the question, if a person could be of low integrity and still be moral, I don't know the answer. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think we all could have different answers for that. I mean, for me, I don't subscribe to the, the whole moral thing. Um, I'm more about values and ethics and principles. And uh, so I could see it being either way or both. <laughs> Hope that doesn't sound like a cop-out, but it, it, I don't know. Yeah. Good. I guess, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little confused about whether you have a specific advocacy about integrity, if there's like ah. some behavior that you'd like to see more mm. of. Thanks, yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, I think it can be useful when we are sharing about voluntarism, for example, okay? We have a lot of voluntarists here. Um, I think it, it helps us to look at the foundation of a thing um, and, and so that it's easier to explain to people or to show them because then we're looking at all these levels and we're able to scale. Um, so if we're looking at the, the, the lowest level um, and, and thinking about the integrity of that and even pointing out to people that, hey, you know, integrity can be useful to you. Like, so we're showing them, hey, your life can be better and stronger. Your relationships can be better and stronger um, if you look at this thing and, and maybe even put some effort into it. So being biased towards voluntarism, where I feel as if it has a certain integrity. So there, if I want other people to see the value for themselves in voluntarism, then that's something I can easily point out to them. Like, hey, for example, in your own life, do you steal from your friends? Do you, um, you know, if you really, you really, really, really need something really badly, does that give you the license to take it from somebody else? And of course, most everybody I know would say, no, it does not give you the license. So then I could point out to them, okay, uh, if you value integrity, then, then wouldn't you look at politics in the same way? So that's one way that I see um, it being useful to think about and understand integrity. <coughs> Um, one maybe sort of um, problem I see with the utilitarian question, of course, I, I love the, the appeal to integrity. I think it's wonderful and beautiful. Consistency is, is fantastic. But as soon as we say that this is going to be beneficial to someone and this is what we focus on, I mean, obviously taking government subsidies is beneficial to a lot of people and politicians get a lot of benefit from and military industrial complex and so on. If, if we start talking about utility, then all bets are out the window. And in fact, as soon as we start talking about utility, we are throwing out integrity. So I think we either have to choose logical consistency or utility. I don't know if we can have both. Okay. 
theory. Maybe it's not. So are you are you saying that pointing out to a person a thing like, hey, if you uh, have integrity in your love relationships, that's beneficial to you. That is an appeal to utility. So I could see it being yes or no on that either way, really. Um, it, it most certainly, I think, tends to be true that it's going to benefit you, and I think a lot of people will be attracted to that. And I think that is a fan, that's a fine selling point. Um, I'm wondering though, in a room of philosophers, if we should be talking <laughs> primarily about utility, right? I'm not saying you are, but. Uh, do you see where I'm coming from? Like, we're talking about utility, but that's not always true. It is, by definition, not always um, utilitarian to, to have integrity. Yeah. Um, so, and let's just talk about integrity. Let's talk about love and consistency. Let's talk about right and wrong. Let's talk about true and false. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I'm done here. <laughs>